So uh, then the strength training, I think, is maybe the other aspect, because I mean, for myself, I remember I was doing an 18 mile training run and I had done some deadlifting and, you know, you know, basically like a lot of posterior work, glutes and hamstrings a few days before the run. And I was still a little sore and I went running. And I mean, that another, another thing I want to ask about is heat because I'm, I live in Arizona. So Scottsdale is very hot. And so I was running at like six to 9 AM, six 30 to nine 30 in the morning. And I know, I know you're so fast. Um, but I, you know, it's very hot here. So, I mean, I wear actually it's, you can see the tan line probably from my, my watch, but I wear a Garmin and, you know, it was, peaking at like 109 degrees. And so, you know, between having posterior soreness from strength training, as well as then the heat, which I'm, those are two separate things. Um, it was a, it was a disaster. Strength training is important, you know, obviously, you know, the ligaments and the uh, muscles need to be strengthened to carry you 13.1 miles or 26.2 miles. And, you know, you just got to be just like a strategy race, you got to strategize when to do them also, because you don't want to do them after you're doing 60 mile run or, you know, on the easy days, you want to be able to do it. You know, sometimes you got to change your long runs or your intensity because you did not feel like you were up to it or happy to get the best out of yourself. So that, that means if the training core training is the next day, you don't want to do the long run or intervals and then go stick to that routine. You have to be flexible to be able to change. But, you know, as much as, you know, weight, your body weight is good or the bars, you just want to get those muscles kind of limber and really um, tense up a little bit to be able to help you carry the, carry the, the, the duration. I think, um, you know, the Dyna disc or the medicine ball is important doing the curls or hamstring curls and in, in the, and the medicine ball is very important to be instead of going to a gym and be able to, to lift big weights because you know 26.2 miles is a long ways but at the same time you want to be able to just nurture those muscles as healthy as possible and you know do it in a fun way you know and the push-ups sit-ups core important is very important i mean uh, i can hear say here and talk to you all about that stuff but i have a a book called Metal Mortals that tells you all about the strength training and con uh, conditioning, uh, cross training. Because as a distance runners, we cannot. Sometimes we are prone to injuries, and you have to prevent it if it becomes big problem. So taking a day off, going for a swim, or taking a day off or going on a lift to go ride is important. So those things instead of hey, it's on my schedule, I gotta do it. Then try to be to the book, you know, as much as you can. You try to, but at the same time, if you have to know what is best for. Danica to be able to say, you know what, coach or team, I need to take a day off today because things do not, I didn't sleep well the last night. So that 16 mile run, we're going to do it tomorrow or the next day versus say forcing it and sticking and rigid to it. It can, it can uh, prone to be a little bit of a problem. So you got to be flexible, but at the same time, strength training is just important to be able to get to your posture. You know, I don't know if you wear sunglasses, but uh, you should, <laughs> you got to wear your glasses, hopefully during the, during the run as well. So that way, because we get fatigued. I use my Maui gym to be able to just and when I'm running, because when you fatigue, your head goes down. But if you have sunglasses, this for the whole time, so it won't slip. So that's another trick that I'm, that I'm sharing with you. Oh, man. Actually, that was something witnessed is that I kind of run a little like chest down. And mm -hmm. I, I, I really try to concentrate on that after it was pointed out. Um, but I don't wear sunglasses and I, and I probably will wear a hat, but I, I actually, I mean, I'd never wear a hat either. My eyes are not very sensitive. And so I think to myself, I don't really squint that much, but it is probably some level of a drain. And it's also a little bit of a, it's like a, it's almost like wearing some, you know, people will tape their bodies in areas that are sore. It like reminds you to have the right sort of posture, as you said. So interesting. I don't know if I'll wear sunglasses because I'm almost down to the wire and I don't know which ones wouldn't bother me, but in the future, if I were to ever do a marathon again, I will train with sunglasses for that, that, um, body position reason. That's a, that's a great one. Um, you know, even though, you know, you don't wear glasses, but you got to constantly think, you know, shake the hands, like, you know, just let them loose every, 5k or every four mile just let you know because you know you're, you're running like this just let them down yeah, the yeah, blood yeah. flow come in but also thinking about you're not wearing sunglasses about to say how's my posture you got to think okay how's my posture am i staying tall you know just imagine you have an egg on top of your head you don't want to tilt it whatever you just want to be tall and that's going to help you just do that maybe every 10k or something you didn't have to think. you do it four or five times and it's when you'll be okay 
I mean, you 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 have so many different modalities. You became such a, you know, insanely accomplished, highly tuned athlete, and you took it so seriously. But I want to go back to how you got that way, and you know, hearing your story about uh, growing up in uh, Atreya and living by your, living without your family from five to 10 years old, and then moving to Italy. I mean, you've had quite a path and I I'm wondering like, first off, what do you, what is your family? Like, how did, how did that go? So you got separated at five years old and, and did you, did you get, were you back together with them when, when you were 10? So, and uh, thanks for bringing that up, Danica. And in Run to Overcome, my autobiography, I thought discuss about how I was born in Eritrea and my dad has to flee from Eritrea to Sudan because he was wanted by the Ethiopian soldiers. So he was going to get prison or killed. So my mom has to kind of have a hard, hard talk, just tell him, hey, you might want to take this chance. You know, it's not like you get on a flight, but he has to go over 225 miles in the wilderness. And sometimes he has to spend the night in the trees on top of the tree in the branch because you know, you know, if he's on the ground, there's hyenas, the lions, scorpions, and other animals that can take his life. So he survived it. But, uh, you know, my, my, my parents had five kids and one on the way. And uh, they tell him to say, if it's, if it's a girl, call her Bimnet, or if it's a guy, call him Bim, uh, girl, call her Amina, which means with belief that one day, if I make it a safe land, I will look after you. So I did not see my father from the age of five till I was 10. And my mom and I, brother and sisters, grew up in a third world country, no electricity, no running water, where we have to fetch the woods to have fire so we can cook meals and we go two to three miles to get that. And in fact, one day I was in the vicinity of another border and I got caught, unfortunately, in the trying to get as much uh, uh woods I, as i can and i got caught and my mom you know we have to be spend the whole day there and my mom has to come and bail us out with a about a, a water bottle size of uh, grain to <laughs> like a bail bond almost to, to allow us to escape and then you got to go two to three miles to go to get to the water out of the well and you know carry it on yourself or put it on a donkey to be able to do that so but fortunately, my dad made it and you know, didn't see him for five years. And there was great people who helped us escape from Eritrea. Um, Dr. Brindici, uh, his boss, and Letta Michael, who's my, my uh, sister Ruth's mom. I have half-sister Ruth. And they worked together to be able to escape. And I remember there's so many generosity people in the world. And uh, my dad asked his boss if he can lend them, this is 1986, if he could lend him a uh, 10, 10 million lira uh, Italian uh, Italian money at the time was six thousand US dollars, and he says, "Is that to save some one one person or to save everybody?" And my dad said, "You know, with the money that I have and worked, it would save everybody." And Dr. Brindici, his boss, said, "Come back Wednesday," and he came back on Wednesday, and he gave him ten million lira cash, and he says, "This is not alone; it's a gift." That's how we got saved, and. Uh, that's how we made it to, from Eritrea to Italy. And we live in Italy for a year and a half. And uh, I saw TV for the first time <laughs> as a 10 year old. I did not understand how people fit in that side that TV. So I went behind the TV to see if they were there. And uh, that's <laughs> humble beginning. But, you know, fortunately, we came to the United States on October 21st, 1987. And uh, we worked hard. And, you know, we were. How old were you then? I was 12th grade. Uh, I'm sorry, 12 year old in seventh grade. So my oldest brother had the most difficult because he was placed without, we didn't speak English. So we were just placed by our age. We didn't have any, my brothers had a little bit more education than I did. But so you are 15 years old, you're going to be in uh, ninth grade or 12 year old, you're supposed in seventh grade. But they luckily for me, they put me in um, elementary for one year just so I can learn English. And the following year in 2000, um, 1988, I was, uh, in PE class uh, in San Diego, next to the San Diego Zoo, if you're ever there, check it out. Roosevelt Junior High Middle School. And then he said, if you run hard, you're going to get A or B. Make sure you take this mile run seriously. He told the whole class. And my parents always expected an A for them class. And I have two older brothers who ran for Roosevelt Junior High. And they had the Roosevelt, Roosevelt Junior High Mile Club shirt. And I wanted to be like them. And so when the coach says go, I just ran as hard as I can. It wasn't around the track four times. It was around the baseball field around the softball field and then go to the middle of the campus down the ramp and finish up the ramp and uh, to get the tissue you have an a to get the tissue and a you have to run uh, six six fifteen i end up running 520 and he goes he couldn't believe it he's like he called the high school coach and uh he says this guy's gonna go to the olympics he said you're gonna go to the olympic but i'm like um 
do I get a t-shirt? <laughs> uh, like, do I get an A and do I get a t-shirt? Yeah, I don't know what the word Olympic meant. I'm, I'm just really learning my English. So I have no idea. And I went and asked my dad that evening. I says, what's the Olympics? And he says, what'd you do? What happened? He's like, uh, Coach Duke Lord says, I ran, I'm going to go to the Olympics in my native tongue, obviously. And he goes, well, the Olympics are every four years and they get peace and harmony, different continents and countries get together for a friendly competition and and the rest is history. Uh, uh, after that, I got my t-shirt, my A, and I started making friends, high-fiving people. And, you know, my picture was in the gym. And, uh, you know, they said I was known as the fastest seventh grader. 